Now that we have all our fabrics and our mat as well as our um, our gypsy, we're going to layer our fabric. So the first thing I need to do is I want this to be flowered, the paint can or like the paint drips. I decided I want that to be a floral. So I'm going to lay my first piece of fabric right here. I tear that down. I want my brush to be yellow and I actually kind of made too big of a piece of paper for this or a piece of fabric for this. So I'm going to cut this particular piece down to six inches so I don't waste waste it. So I'm going to put this here. This is going to be the bristles of our brush. For the dark gray, this is going to be the accent like the handles and such on the can. That's going to go in this top corner. And then the red paint, the word paint, is going to come right here below the gray. And we're ready to cut. Okay, so now we have our gypsy. You can tell right here is where we have our floral fabric. If we were to turn our gypsy and insert this into the machine, that is how I want you to turn your mat. Let's turn our power on. I had to go get my cord to plug in my gypsy. I've been working with it all morning. Okay, to insert the mat when you do not have a cartridge, you're going to hit the um, little cut button, the little knife. And then, when it comes up, we're going to hit the load mat button. Okay, now we're going to hit the cut button. And we're going to tell it OK. So now we're going to cut our fabric. And with this, I sometimes kind of rub, rub it a little bit just to make sure the fabric doesn't pull up. But this looks like it's stuck down pretty well. This is a fairly new mat. So right now it's cutting the paint drips. And we can't have regular paint on our shirt. We have to have colorful paint on our shirt. The actual adhesive I'm using for the um, fusible web is, is from Slice. I have found that it's thinner. You can work with a needle with it easily. When I'm done cutting all these pieces, we're gonna iron them to our shirt. And then I take black embroidery floss, or sometimes the color of the fabric, and I actually hand stitch it down with a blanket stitch. On the back side, we're going to iron this just for a minute or so. Now, I bought this shirt at the Goodwill for a whole $3.50. Um, this is a great way to save your children's clothing when they're in art class. You can send it to school with them and request that they wear this. Or maybe you could get together with some of the other parents and create these for your art teacher. Um, it's also great for at home, whenever you're wanting to paint at home so you don't get paint all over their nice new school clothes. And you want this just to, um, to set is what we're doing with this. I'm just ironing it on the back side so I don't have to put a piece of paper down between it. Because normally you would put a piece of typing paper down, but I don't have typing paper with me at this exact second. And you want to iron this probably four or five minutes. Hi, now we're going to assemble our um, paint shirt, our smock. So I am going to lay down my paint um, spill on the bucket and I'm going to just quickly iron this down. The next piece I want to lay down is the um, kind of like the shadow for the inside of the bucket. And I'll just lay that down and quick hit it with heat. Just long enough to adhere it quick. And then the bottom of the bucket just lays right down here along this edge. Just kind of match it up as best as you can. And once you get it lined up, once again we're just going to quick hit this with heat so it's where it needs to be. Okay, I'm going to come over to the paint and I have the paintbrush itself and I also have like the little piece that holds it together. I decided to do the paint bristles in yellow and I am doing the little piece that holds it in red. 
and I'm just barely going to overlap these two just so I have to only sew one seam when it comes to um, putting these together. So once you get those down, just quick, once again, hit it with the heat. Take care those down. And then the paint drip here, um, sometimes your machine is going to cut like a little bit rough. If that happens, if that happens, all I want you to do is just trim off those little pieces that look kind of funny and just go with it. So this right here is going to lay up here and we're just matching these um, contours. Once you get those matched up, once again, just hit it with a little bit of heat. Okay, and we have our paint bucket handle. The handle piece is going to match up over here and then the circle part of it is gonna go along this contour there. So all we have to do is match that up. Make sure it's laying there. Put some heat on it. And then instead of leaving the wet paint in silver, I decided that I really thought I might like it in, in the red instead. But I'm going to off-center it just a little bit so there's just a hint of the silver showing up behind it. But you can see here on this, I have a couple of little um, areas that didn't quite cut all the way through. So I'm just going to quick trim those four or five little strings off. And then I'm going to just put this so it kind of has like a shadow of silver. I'm going to lay all these down like that. Let's do the word wet and then we'll do the word paint separately. Here's wet and then here comes paint. Now um, you need to take the centers of your letters out. There's P. Okay, get that center of that A out. I and I've got an I dot here somewhere. There it is. Since we've got these in the right position right now, let's go ahead and just hit this with a little bit of heat. And then we'll finish the, the N and the T. Be kind of careful if your work surface is hot because it wants to start adhering down before it's time to adhere down. So, and then here's our little drip. That's going to come right here. So, now that we have all our pieces on here, um, we're going to be going and stitching around this with probably a black thread to really make it pop. But while I've got this here, I'm just going to quick flip this over and just give it a good iron. Just so it stays adhered. Let's flip that back over. So we've got wet paint. Now that you have your shirt um, adhered down, ironed down, you're going to take some black cross stitch thread. This is number 310 and it is um, the DMC thread and you're going to take a needle and I also use a quilter's um, thimble and you're going to start sewing your the edges of your shirt. Now to make a really quick and simple knot, you're going to hold your thread, like hold your needle in your right hand and your thread and you're going to wrap it around three times and then you're going to hold that thread and you're going to pull this all the way through and this just makes a very nice simple um, little knot. We're now going to come from the bottom side of our shirt and we're going to go up along the edge of the can so you can define it a little bit more and I'm going to pull my needle through. Let me see if you all can see this and I make like a C sorry that's my answer machine. I make a C and then I'm going to go up just 
like a quarter of an inch and I'm going to take about a quarter inch in. And I'm going to pull my needle through and pull this out to the right hand side and that's going to like just make a little stitch in there and it's just going to be it's just going to be defined. So we're just going to take stitches along this and all you're doing is just following the edge of this you do ink. And we're going to go around the edge of every um, area. So just you're going to make that C every time and when you get fast at it you won't have to make such a defined C. I just kind of throw my thread over there. And you're just going to follow this along. Oops. Dropped my needle, sorry. So this is kind of what you're going to end up with the edge of it. 